the story of ship's serviceman, third class Billy Arnold, mirrors that of his ship, the USS Coney. As a general quarters gunner aboard the Fletcher class destroyer, Arnold manned his 20 millimeter gun as the Coney zigzagged the Pacific. Beginning in March 1944, the Coney hunted off Bougainville for Japanese barges and submarines and patrolled the southern Surigao Straits. In June, she was en route to Saipan when she encountered and sunk a Japanese submarine. A month later, she joined the bombardment of Tinian and screened for submarines during the landings. The Coney then moved on to screen carriers during landings at Paliliu and bombardment groups in the Leyte Gulf. On the night of October 24, 1944, Arnold and the USS Coney joined several other cruisers and destroyers at the Battle of Surigao Strait. The naval battle raged through the night and ended at daybreak in a decisive American victory. Through the rest of her time in the Pacific, the USS Coney screened carriers, transports, and landings, and also supported minesweepers and underwater demolition teams. She returned to the States in 1945 and was decommissioned in March 1946. That same month, Arnold was discharged from the Navy. Among his many honors for diligence at his post, ship's serviceman, third class Billy Arnold, received the Asiatic Pacific Theater Campaign Bar with four stars, the Philippine Liberation Campaign Bar with two stars, and the Chinese Liberation Campaign Bar with one star. September 28, 1944. Staff Sergeant Harry Bell was a waste gunner aboard the B-17 bomber Millie K of the 388th Bomb Group, 560th Bomb Squadron, 8th Army Air Force. Flying out of Kinetischau, England, the seventh mission of the Millie K was to bomb an oil refinery in Merseburg, Germany. After holding off German fighters and dropping her bombs, the Millie K was struck with a devastating flak hit and went down. Bell and the rest of the crew managed to bail out but were captured by the Nazis and sent to Stalag Lufour in Grosteichau, Poland. After nearly four months in captivity, the Soviet army was closing in on the camp. On February 6, 1945, the Nazis rounded up all 6,000 plus men and marched them nearly 600 miles toward another POW camp close to Hamburg, Germany. In what would be known as the Black March, for over 60 days, Sergeant Bell and the other prisoners marched in weather that stayed around 20 degrees below zero. Without proper clothing and food, the men suffered along the route, many succumbing to exposure, starvation, and disease. The prisoners ate charcoal to help stop dysentery. At most nights, they huddled together in ditches to help keep warm as they slept. After watching men die nearly every day, Bell and two others decided to escape. Their attempt was successful but they were caught again in the town of Wittenberg, where they were thrown in jail and beaten by police. They were then sent off to spend the remainder of the war in Stalag 3A in Luchenwald. At night, Bell and the other prisoners could see the explosions from the Battle of Berlin. On the 22nd of April, the German guards fled the camp and Stalag Luft 3A was liberated by the Red Army. For his heroism, strength and fortitude in the face of near constant peril, Staff Sergeant Harry Bell was awarded the Purple Heart and three bronze stars. As a member of the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne, known as the Screaming Eagles, Sergeant Joseph R. Byerly, nicknamed Jumpin' Joe, was one of the first paratroopers to drop into Normandy the night before D-Day. Almost immediately separated from his regiment, Byerly managed to blow up a power station while trying to make his way back to his unit. He was captured by the Germans and placed into several prison camps, escaping twice. During his second escape, he boarded a train which he mistakenly believed was bound for Poland. He woke the next morning to find himself in the heart of Berlin. Captured by the Gestapo, Byerly was tortured as an American spy and was slated to be shot, but the German military stepped in, claiming he was an escaped POW and dragged him off to Stalag 3C. Byerly escaped again. Within a few weeks, he approached a Soviet tank battalion, held up a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes and shouted, Amerikansky to Vorish, which meant American comrade, and he convinced the commander to let him join them as they made their way to Berlin. 
For over a month, Byerly traveled and fought with the Soviets against the retreating Germans. At one point, joining an attack on Stalag 3C and freeing his fellow POWs. One early morning, the battalion was attacked by Stukas and Byerly was severely wounded. He woke up in a Russian hospital in Poland where he was visited by Marshal Zhukov, one of the greatest generals of the Red Army. Grateful for his efforts on behalf of the Soviet Union, Zhukov made sure Byerly had safe passage back to Moscow where he was then delivered to the American Embassy. Byerly was held at the embassy under suspicion as he had been declared dead nearly a year earlier and given a funeral back home in Muskegon, Michigan. Eventually, his identity was confirmed by fingerprints and he was discharged with honors. Earning a bronze star for valor, Sergeant Jumpin' Joe Byerly was the only known soldier to ever fight for both the United States and the Soviet Union.